Now then everyone, so in this week's video I want to expand on a video that I made a few weeks ago which uh, I'll link to above me right now where I essentially try out 4K video editing on my iPad Pro which uh, which I've got here and I'm, I'm still using. In fact I'm still using it right now to do editing on and I've enjoyed the process so much I have actually invested in a Apple Magic Keyboard which you can see there. So before I do get started if you've not already done so please subscribe to the channel and then after you've watched this video consider giving it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the things that I've talked about and shared with you today. In this week's video I want to expand on that process because now I've had a chance to do a few more projects using Premiere Rush and the iPad Pro, I thought what I wanted to do was bring you some of the issues I faced coming from full-featured NLEs such as Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve to mobile editing on the iPad Pro. So the first thing to note with Premiere Rush is it doesn't have a preview window. And this might not come as a surprise to you because you are working on a much smaller screen and not a desktop monitor or a laptop screen that can have a lot more space on it. But because it doesn't have a preview monitor, it means that when I've imported all of the videos that I'm going to be editing with, I either have to drag and drop them onto the timeline or add them to the timeline or you can click on the three little dots in the viewer and you can open those up to look at it on a smaller window which is quite handy but at the same time it would be nice to have a preview window especially where I could also mark in and out points on the video. The other thing you're not going to get using Premiere Rush in that media import window is bins or the ability to create folders for all your footage. Now on the first vlog I did this wasn't too bad because everything had been filmed sequentially and I had a bit of b-roll all that kind of connected to what I was going to be showing and uh, the project file itself wasn't that large however on a project I did recently which had lots of different footage from the camera 4k camera footage that I was using all the way through to the b-roll clips and footage I had that I was compiling into the video uh, I found that just not having bins was pretty difficult. Talking about sequences this brings me on to the fact that you can't change your sequence settings or create a sequence with specific settings in Premiere Rush. At the time of making my previous 4K video that wasn't too bad because it was more about just being able to video edit 4K using my iPad Pro. However in this particular project that I was doing I was working with 1080p footage and 4k footage and really I just wanted to work in a 1080p timeline however I started editing the 4k footage first and once I'd done that it had actually baked the rest of the timeline to be 4k. This is a small workaround I could have set up the sequence using one of the 1080p clips and then add the 4k footage and what have you however it's nice to have the option to actually choose your sequence settings which would have yeah, which is what I'm kind of getting at. The next thing you have to kind of get used to with mobile editing in Premiere Rush is the fact that when you drag and drop your clips into the timeline, it automatically magnetizes them together. So you can't actually move them apart once you've put them into the timeline. They're kind of always together. You can swap them around and rotate them, but you can't actually move them away or even move into one another so that you could clip off the end of a clip if you needed to with another one. They kind of sort of magnetize together and pull and push and swap around. The other thing is when you add clips to a timeline you can't choose the video track or audio track. It will just automatically add them to the main video one track. This just means that you've then got to click it and drag it and move it to the correct video track but it'd be nice to be able to drag and drop it onto the video track which you want to rather than having to do it afterwards once the, the software's always already done it. It's a small little thing but again adds up a little bit of time to get used to and get your head around if you're coming from NLEs. So all being said the takeaway, the main takeaway for me still is mobile video editing is only going to get better and some of the things that I've mentioned in today's video probably could 100% be fixed in future software updates which they might do. It might even be fixed on other software that exists for the iPad OS which I've not yet looked into but like I mentioned earlier I don't really want to move from Premiere Rush because it is so similar to Premiere Pro and I can move between the two really easily. So Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That always really helps me out too. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you very much.